Hello, creative, and welcome back to the Empowered Creatives Podcast, finding confidence between hustle and burnout. I'm your host, Victoria Hines, creative career coach, helping creatives just like you navigate those twists and turns in your creative career. This week, I want to talk about something super important called critics. We all have critics in our life, and as artists, we are very empathetic. We want to please a lot of people oftentimes, and it can be very, very hard to listen to critics, and rightfully so. Now in the day of social media, what's really even more challenging is that list of critics has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. Now that we share our work online, so many people get to see it, and so many people get to be critics. Real quick before I dive into this podcast, I want to take you back to a story from my childhood, and I hope my friend Kate doesn't mind me sharing this one, but I had a very best friend in the fourth grade who um, was very opinionated. Uh, We actually had a really good relationship, I think, because we both were very direct, and we could listen to that from one another. We understood that we were both direct and we actually respected that from one another. Um, she says now it's, we, we both have strong personalities, which can be a great thing. I have this vivid memory of us having to walk around the school. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I went to, I actually grew up in Texas. So it was walking around a hot school in Texas. I think it was something to do with our physical physical fitness uh, for the day. So I have this vivid memory of walking around the school and I was singing. And I had not had any formal singing training by this point, but I love to sing. In fact, this was the age where I was writing my own song lyrics and coming up with my own uh, little jingles inside my little notebook. And I was singing on this walk, and I vividly remember her turning around and saying, man, you don't sound good. You're a terrible singer. I was instantly offended. And what made it even worse, and she will fully admit this, my friend Kate might be one of the worst singers I've ever heard. I love her to death, but she's one of those classic people where she sings a song and you cannot quite figure out what song it is um, because the notes are so off key. So even though it may be a popular song playing on the radio, if she starts singing it, I would oftentimes have a really hard time placing it. So. You know, that's one of my most earliest memories of receiving criticism of my own art. Not that I tell myself I'm a singer today, but it was a form of criticism that I was receiving from the outside. And in hindsight, I think that form of criticism actually shut me down. Um, I never felt super confident in my singing. Because I was an actor, I oftentimes, you know, would go out for musicals and I could dance, I could act. I always told everybody singing was my least, it was my weakest point. Let's put it that way. And in hindsight, I'm not bad. Actually, most people nowadays say like, oh yeah, you're you're a pretty good singer. Like you can hold a really great note. Thanks to singers, I don't think so, but it's a great compliment. All of this to say, every single one of us has these memories of criticism hitting us as artists, whether it's your music, your art, your business, your writing, your books, etc. Oh, there's so many critics in our life. We go from friends and maybe family members when we're younger to teachers, professors. Can I also offer criticism that sticks in possibly the wrong way? I also faced theater critics, and there are art critics and literary critics, uh, people who are literally paid to criticize your work. You also have that well-meaning um, but unsolicited advice from friends or family or parents. All of this criticism can be really, really hard to weed through. Here's the biggest thing to recognize about critics. Unless they are giving you constructive feedback, unless they are helping you in some way, their words really don't matter. The second thing to realize is most of the time, they don't actually mean any harm. 
they're either doing a job or think that they're helping you in some well-meaning way, or sometimes they're just talking and not even thinking about it. I actually think oftentimes nowadays, criticism tells you more about the critic than it does about you and your work. But the most harmful thing about criticism is it can leave you unsure. It can make you feel stuck because you start listening to everyone else around you and you stop listening to yourself. All of those voices around you can be very, very loud. They can come from a pleasing place. It can also just be, we've forgotten. We've forgotten how to tune in and listen to our own voice. So this episode is going to dive into four tactics to shut out the critics. Hey there, creative. I have a delightful invitation just for you. Imagine diving even deeper into the incredible world of living your life as an empowered creative, including more tips, tricks, and advice arriving straight into your inbox. Sounds pretty cool, right? Well, guess what? I've got something special brewing and I don't want you to miss out. Introducing my oh-so-awesome bi-weekly email newsletter. It's a vibrant community bursting with passion, curiosity, and the love of building a creative life. By joining my newsletter, you'll get first access to new promotions and launches, as well as my welcoming voice in your ear every other week. Also, I'll share with you my creative career audit worksheet, a secret tool myself and clients have used during our own career transitions and pivots. So don't miss this opportunity to be my pen pal, as well as deepen your connection with fellow empowered creatives by heading to www.victoriahines.com or following the link in the show notes below. Thank you for being such an incredible listener. And I really look forward to sharing this exciting journey with you through both the podcast and my newsletter. Now, let's dive back into the show. All right, four strategies to ignore criticism. The first one is one of my favorites. I mentioned her on the last solo podcast. I'm bringing her back again. It's good old Brene Brown. The first strategy is to evaluate the source. And I love her analogy for this tactic. So I want you to imagine that you're the center of a vast arena. So many people can now buy seats in this arena to your life, your career, your work, your business, your art, your social media post, etc. We live in the day and age of the internet, and we get bombarded with thoughts and opinions, what other people think of us day in and day out. And so many people, so many people can buy very, very, very cheap seats to your arena. In fact, most of those seats don't cost money anymore, just maybe cost a little bit of their time. But what's most important is you have to figure out who's in your box seats. Who are the people that you have actually personally invited into your box? Who are the people that energize you? Whenever you have a conversation with him, you instantly feel lighter. Who are the people you trust, who you know you can go to and tell uncomfortable or maybe emotionally loaded or scary things to? Who in your life loves you and supports you, no matter what, no strings attached? Whose advice and guidance do you admire? Do you seek out? I want you to go ahead and write down two to five names. We'll do this exercise a little too, but these are the people that you go to when you are unsure. You're scared. You're feeling overwhelmed. You can't hear your voice anymore. Those are the people that you listen to. Everybody else, you shut out. Strategy number two is to seek out constructive criticism. It's similar to the last one, but a little bit different. So constructive criticism is maybe feedback that is designed in more of a way that is going to help you move forward. And in fact, I would say one of the most tangible points about it is that it's solicited. You are purposefully seeking out very distinct points of feedback because those are the areas that you want to work on with your art, with your craft, et cetera. 
something I've talked to my clients a lot before is um, before they send out their work is I, I told them, I was like, I want you to know exactly what type of feedback you are trying to get. Be hyper-specific because otherwise a lot of people are just going to toss their opinions at you and it's going to be really hard to move your work forward in that environment. There's also sometimes a way, if you're feeling like you're getting unconstructive feedback, is to start asking questions. Be a little bit curious. So this happens a lot in businesses is you maybe receive a piece of feedback about your business or your offering that just seems really blunt and rude. And it's really easy to shut down, just want to shut it out, just ignore it. And it's okay if that's your gut instinct, walk away. But if you're able to, come back to it and see if you can reach out to the other person and ask some more questions. Lean in with a little bit of curiosity and find out why did they say that. Dig a little deeper. You might be surprised that if you keep asking why, they might end up being able to give you really constructive feedback in the long run, even though it started deconstructive to begin with. Strategy number three is focus on your goals. Remember, all of these thoughts and opinions are going to hit you like those balls that fly out of the chute whenever you go to a batting cage. They are going to be flying at you from every angle, every direction, every different type of speed. You have to stay focused on what your goals are. This becomes huge when you're running a business. There are so many things that you could be doing should be doing, want to be doing. There's different ways to do them. You're going to get a lot of opinions and advice, but at the end of the day, it's very important to focus on what is your one next goal and what advice or feedback is going to help you tackle that one goal ahead of you. Strategy number four is build up your own confidence. Criticism can actually highlight areas where you're feeling particularly vulnerable or sensitive. The next time you get a piece of criticism or feedback that bristles you a little bit, that makes you uncomfortable, take a moment, give yourself the grace, walk away, get some distance, and then go back to it and ask yourself, why? Why did that piece of criticism disarm me? Why did it make me upset? Why are you feeling triggered by it? By doing a little bit of a deep dive, you can start to discover if the piece of criticism was valid or maybe it's something that you want to work on and you want to work on getting rid of that armor a little bit to build up your own confidence when you do face that criticism in the future. All right, creative, here's your one thing this week. We're going to go back to the Brene Brown analogy. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine you are at the middle of an arena. It could be a baseball stadium. It could be a music arena, whatever you want it to be. Who's in your box? When you turn around and you see the prestigious box, the box that only you can give tickets away to, the box that is strictly invite only, VIP, who did you invite? Who has specialty admission into that box seat? I also want you to turn to the rest of the stadium and imagine you're pulling out some binoculars and I want you to stare up all the way to the top of the stadium. Who's in the cheap seats? Who do you need to ignore right now? Because frankly, their words aren't helping you be the best possible version of you. Make a list and hold that list tight. All right, creative, if you've been enjoying this podcast, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. It's the number one way you can show love to the Empower Creatives podcast. And with that being said, until the next time, stay creative.